So you got a brand new PC. Let me show you how to correctly set it up now. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and today I will be showing you how to correctly set up your PC once you first get it, just so you can get the max FPS out of the box. So we are going to be going over some Windows setup, that's mostly it, and as well as some BIOS settings for you guys, just to make sure that you're getting a little bit more performance out of the box. Now, for Windows, I will be using Windows 11. I am expecting many people, including myself, to upgrade to Windows 11 with their brand new PCs in the upcoming future, just because it is the newest OS and also will soon be the most popular. All these settings will still work for Windows 10, so if you're ever just reinstalling your OS and you wanna follow this guide, feel free to go ahead and follow it with Windows 10. Obviously, the user interface will just look a little different. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. Also, if you do find this video helpful or you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, like, join the Discord down below. Tell me if you have any other things you do to your PC to make it a little bit faster and start up. That'd be awesome to know. So to start off, on the PC, we're going to be updating your graphics card drivers. Now, obviously most people have Nvidia or AMD. If you're one of those with an Intel graphics card, you can as well do this, but you just wanna type in Nvidia or whatever kind of graphics card brand driver you have. I have an Nvidia one. So you wanna hit official drivers, just feel free to go to there, select which graphics card you have in the operating system you're on. So this is what I'm on. And then you wanna just download the latest driver. You can go into a lot of different, different things but for most people the latest driver will be best for amd there's a little bit more just first of all select the product you have so for example i have say i have a 6950 xt you can go to your amd drivers select which windows version you have for most people i'm going to recommend recommended if you want to especially right now around this time optional is a lot newer and i would recommend the optional but if you have any issues just go back to recommended as well for amds let's just go back to the driver tab you want to hit chipsets which select whatever chips that you have so if you have an am4 that's the rise that's the ryzen cpus up until the 7000 series so let's say i have i don't know an am5 with x670e hit submit and download the latest chipset driver there are sometimes this can significantly help your fps especially on windows 11. i found windows 10 you don't really need them as much but windows 11 it does help while we have edge open also i just want to do a couple of things so go open up on the top right you'll see little three dots open up settings here you can now go to system and performance i like to turn off startup boost Continue running background extensions of the app when edge is closed. So well that the same thing with hardware acceleration. I'm not a fan of that. One thing you might want to do though is just turn on the efficiency stuff. If especially you're maybe, I don't know, having like Twitch, YouTube, all that stuff open in the background, you might want to just leave this on. It will be nice. Um, a couple of things also while we're in here, I believe it is in the privacy search. Just scroll down in this tab and find yourself the address bar and search tab and just switch it to Google. If you want to use any of the other ones, I don't know why, just make sure it's on Google. No one wants to use Bing, doesn't make any sense. Now it's time for some Windows Immersive Control Panel settings. To get your Windows Immersive Control Panel, you can just right click on your Windows icon and open up settings here. Now we're gonna start up at the system tab itself. Go to display. Now you can have all this here. Now HDR, if you have this, feel free to turn this on. You can also go in here and enable something called auto HDR. On Windows 11, that is a feature. It just allows certain things that may not be in HDR be like kind of HDR and it makes it look a little bit better for some people. Nightlight, wouldn't recommend that. That's just a blue light filter. If you're into that. Scale, okay, one thing. So scale, I like to do it 100%. Obviously, if it says recommended for something else, feel free to do that. If you want to also, you can set custom scaling. In Windows 10, there's also a setting called like fix apps if blurry, you can uncheck that and that will just stop Windows from randomly changing scaling size. Now we're gonna go to advanced display. If you have multiple displays, you can do both of these as well. Let's do that for example. So I have a 270 Hertz that auto set, perfect. Now my capture card, which is what you guys are seeing this on, set to 60 hertz instead of 144. So we're gonna click that. And then once it loads back, you just wanna hit keep changes. This is gonna make sure that your monitors are running at their correct refresh rates because we do not want you guys obviously running like a 60 hertz 
refresh rate on like a 240 hz monitor that's not going to be a good experience now just also in graphics now there'll be a couple of things so change default graphics make sure hardware accelerated gpu scheduling is enabled this is only for nvidia gpus it might be on intel gpus i do not know for sure this is not on current amd gpus at the time of recording if you run windowed games you can also turn this on but most of your games should be in full screen now back to the system tab on the left just hit notifications and turn them off i do not enjoy having notifications show up especially when i'm in a game if you want to keep them on feel free now storage turn off storage since this like automatically is deleting stuff if you have really low space might want to keep this on but for most people you do not want to or at it make sure that windows is activated highly going to recommend that purchasing a windows license you can get some very cheap at certain places on the internet now we can move on to so bluetooth and devices nothing really to do here maybe if you have bluetooth enabled and you're not using bluetooth for any reason or wi-fi and you're using wired internet feel free to do that i would highly recommend using a wired internet connection that's gonna be significantly better than wireless network and internet we don't have to touch any of this here advanced network settings as you can see there's nothing here that is necessary personalization background all your most of this is all just personal preference here feel free to mess around with some stuff one thing i would recommend though transparency effects turn this off so what transparency effects is is just it uses your gpu a little bit but as you can see let's find a way we can see it so kind of you can see it in the taskbar down here so if i move this window down here you see it gets a little dark you can see the colors moving turn it off you won't be able to see that i also do like dark mode a lot it may, it's a lot nicer on the eyes all these other things are personal preference so we're just going to go to apps installed apps if there are any auto apps that you do not use feel free to uninstall them so for example i'd never use a maps app i'd use google maps wouldn't use a maps app on here just feel free to uninstall it go through all of these the one i would recommend though uninstall onedrive just onedrive isn't necessary as well as microsoft teams those two definitely do seem to take up the most amount of like processing power out of the installed apps offline maps let me just make sure so i have seen at times i do not know it's loading right now okay so automatic maps oh map updates automatically update when plugged in and on wi-fi uncheck this we do not want maps to be downloaded this is something we're not going to use maps ever so feel free to do that video playback all of this is good startup i'm not going to use any of these if you do let's say maybe you use real tech for some reason you can leave it on but i'm not going to use any single one of these apps so just feel free to turn these off it's going to make startup a little bit faster discord and stuff is perfect for that but everything else isn't necessary now we can go to the accounts do whatever you want this is just also microsoft does basically force you on a microsoft account for windows 11 there are ways around it that you can do wouldn't if you want to use them obviously it's kind of going to limit you on the windows store because you can only use free apps now i'm definitely going to make sure that you set your time zone so i am east coast so you want to set your time zone as you can see the time set now also sync now i've seen weird things happen where like my time gets messed up and then certain things in game have issues this stops that you can show additional calendars if you want but i don't need that gaming so we're going to talk about game bar so Xbox Game Bar is not able to be disabled on Windows 11 fully. You can look up, there are some registry keys. I'm not gonna really recommend registry keys for this video. This video is very normally friendly. Just feel free to, just make sure you disable this so you don't, I guess if you're using an Xbox controller, it automatically does that. You can uncheck all the audio stuff, just so that it's not, when it is recording, it's not taking up as much uh, processing power, sorry. Now, game mode, gaming. You want to have this on windows 10 and 11 doesn't matter game mode on all newer versions of windows you want to make sure you have game mode on that's very important accessibility we can skip over this one privacy and security let's just take a look here now no okay so feel free if like let's say you maybe not want your pc and apps to have access to calendar uncheck that feel free you do whatever you want though all these are pretty oh searching windows here's a good one Make sure this is set to classic. This is just gonna make sure it doesn't actually go through your whole PC and like index. Definitely makes things a little bit slower. Process constantly indexing your files. This only just searches your local folders. So for example, your do downloads, documents, pictures, all that stuff. 
just make sure that it should be auto set i haven't changed any of these settings since it's automatically set there so in windows 10 you're going to see something called i believe it is background apps just disable that you don't want things running in the background still all your apps will still work it's just not something you want windows update if you want to you can check for updates or you can just pause for as many weeks you just keep going advanced options this is a big setting i always disable allow downloads from other pcs no we don't want to help other devices download updates or as well as other devices get updates downloaded for you this will affect your internet negatively so just make sure you disable the setting very recommended restart apps and now you can do all this if you want to i don't like to use my sign in info to automatically finish setting up after an update that's just weird but we have finished the immersive control panel settings and now it is time for the windows standard control panel settings to get to the standard control panel you just want to hit windows key and r on your keyboard you'll see a little pop up in the bottom left and you want to i'm just going to move it to the center for you guys but you want to open type in control when you get to control you'll see something like this so we're going to start off with hardware and sound mouse and this is the most important one of the most important things you can i can recommend uncheck enhance pointer position this will disable mouse acceleration so if you move your mouse one inch let's say you move it one inch really fast it's going to move a lot farther but if you move it really slow it's going to make sure that no matter how how fast you move it it will always move the same amount for that distance this is a big deal especially in games where you might have issues where if you move really fast you're going to miss and overshoot it so this is going to make sure that you stop that definitely going to re recommend that one Another option in the control panel is power options. Just want to hit show additional plans if it's not showing, hit high performance. This is going to allow your CPU to boost a little bit higher. One thing you can also might want to research though is the ultimate performance plan. Just scroll down to this link and enable it, but you'll have to open up PowerShell to do this. High and ultimate performance are typically about the same though, so you don't really need more than high performance. Now on to the windows store settings so we're going to open up the microsoft store this is my first time opening it so it might take a little while no it's fine okay so you want to oh, click on your icon here for your information about your account hit app settings update app updates automatically uh, update apps automatically sorry no you do not want to do that we want to update apps when we choose them to be. Because for example, let's say it's a, maybe you have, I don't know, Forza installed. It's a really massive game and you maybe have like a multi gigabyte update. We don't want that affecting our ping negatively in a competitive game. You don't want to do that. You can also disable video audio autoplay, but that's not really necessary because you'll only notice that when you're searching for stuff in the store. But always something to look at. And now we're actually going to go to your bios now this is where it gets slightly more advanced so to get to your bios you're going to want to open up your when you're going to hit a windows key hit the power icon hold shift you hold your left shift and then left click on restart now this will open up a different screen and this is how you get to your bios the easy way another way you can do it is you can hit delete f2 there's a lot of different buttons to hit to get into the bios so if you do not know which button to hit feel free to google it for you guys most of them are deleter f2 though it's typically the standard button but i'll be back once we get to the menu so once you have restarted the pc you'll see a couple other options so what you want to do is you want to hit the troubleshoot option here you want to hit advanced options open up uefi firmware settings this is your bios and just hit restart and you will now wait for it to restart once you do reach your BIOS, you might hit something called easy mode or something like this. So this is what I have here. So you're going to want to hit advanced. So for the that's F7 or I can click this, it'll be a different button for a lot of different BIOSes. Every single BIOS looks different, whether it be from an Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, all these different companies. So just be wary. You might need to take a little bit of a dig, but you're going to want to typically go to about an OC setting mode or AI tweaker, tweaker, um, I believe on a suit on asrock is something about oc but you just want to scroll down to you find something about dram on amd this can be called docp or expo depending on what you are on but you just want to enable the xmp profile this is the rated speed of your memory so for me that is ddr4 4000 15 16 16 36 at 1.5 volts 
that is just a very important thing. Now, we are going to be now talking about an Intel CPU here. So if you're on an AMD, skip ahead about 30 seconds and you'll get information for you guys. But for the a for the Intel people, you want to go until you find something. Typically, it's about in an advanced mode, an advanced CPU setting. So that might be actually in a different tab. That's in the advanced tab. Find something called CPU configuration. What we're going to want to do for everyone, disable C states. It's a big deal. There's a couple other ones you can do. Um, you can also, if you're on a unlock CPU, I guess, disable speed shift and EIST. This is um, speed shift and speed step. Typically you want to keep turbo boost enabled, but kind of depends. Um, these obviously do whatever you want with those though. But if you do notice your clock speed staying really low and not boosting, feel free to do these. Um, this is not an overclocking guide. So if you don't, only one that I know will always work is disabling C states. Now for my AMD people, what you want to do is you'll find something called AMD overclocking. You want to make sure that you enable precision boost overdrive, set that to enabled. It's going to allow the CPU to boost a little bit higher. Another one you want to do also, I believe this is an AMD CBS. Um, you might need to look around a couple of the AMD menus. They will be called the AMD like overclocking is you want to disable cool and quiet. This definitely does limit some of your performance. Make sure it's disabled. And as well with that C state feature, I was just talking about on Intel on Intel. You want to disable it, but on AMD, you want to enable it. That is going to give you a little bit more performance. But once everything is all good, you can go to a settings or a save and exit tab and just hit save changes to reboot. And yes, and then we will go back to your OS. Once you're back in your OS, you are literally all done and you are ready to play games. Hope this video has helped you guys. If it has, if it's gotten you more FPS, if it's just gotten you ready to set up your brand new PC, make sure you hit that like button down below. Subscribe, follow me on all my socials, links down below. Feel free to support me on Patreon as well. Join the Discord, join all that, join the community. But I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you guys later. Peace. Thank you.